In this video, we'll be working through question 5 of Math Lit Paper 2, November 21. If you'd like to download a copy of this question paper, the link is in the description below. 5.1 Noah is a traveling salesperson who lives in the United States of America, USA. He uses a map to estimate his traveling time between cities. On Annexure D is a partial map which shows the following. Various cities Distances in miles between cities. Average traveling times in hours and minutes between these cities. On the map in Annex D, we are given a note that displays the key for making a distinction between distance and time. We are given an example of how to use this key. Taking the route from New York to Lee, the distance is 143 miles and the traveling time is 3 hours and 26 minutes. We are instructed to use Annex D to answer the questions that follow. 5.1.1 Choose one letter, W, X, Y or Z that will make each of the following statements true. A. The average time in hours to travel between Lee and Springfield is W. 50 over 60 X. 50 over 100 Y. 0, 0,5 or Z, 41. From the map in Annex D, the traveling time between Lee and Springfield is 0 hours and 50 minutes. We know that there is 60 minutes in 1 hour, so the correct answer is 50 over 60. So the correct answer to 5.1.1A is W. 5.1.1B Which city lies southeast of Boston? W. Providence X. Lowell Y. Gloucester or Z. Plymouth From the map in Annex D, the city that lies southeast of Boston is Plymouth. So the correct answer to 5.1.1b is Z. 5.1.2 Never found that the same time of 1 hour and 5 minutes is estimated for traveling from Providence to Boston and from Springfield to Worcester. A. Write down the actual distance in miles from Providence to Boston and from Springfield to Worcester. From the map in Annex D, the distance from Providence to Boston is 52 miles and from Springfield to Worcester is 55 miles. So the answer to 5.1.2a is Providence to Boston equals 52 miles. Springfield to Worcester equals 55 miles. 5.1.2b Give one possible reason why the map indicates the same traveling time for these two different distances. One reason could be that there are different speed limits on the routes to these different cities. Other acceptable answers are conditions or nature of the roads, a volume of traffic on the road, number of traffic lights on the route. 5.1.3 Now we travel from Portland passing three cities, A, B and C in the table, to reach its destination city D. Table 1 below shows the time taken to travel between various unknown cities indicated by A, B, C and D. Table 1 is divided into three columns. The first column lists the start city and the second column lists the destination city. And the third column lists the time taken between cities. We are instructed to name the cities A, B, C and D. From the map in Annex D, the only city that is connected to Portland is Newburyport. So city A is Newburyport. From Newburyport to City B, the travel time is a half an hour. From the map in Annex D, the city with a traveling time of 30 minutes from Newburyport is Lawrence. So City B is Lawrence. From Lawrence to City C, the travel time is 35 minutes. From the map in Annex D, the city with a travel time of 35 minutes from Lawrence is Boston. So City C is Boston. From Boston to City D, the travel time is 1 hour. From the map in Annex D, the city with a travel time of 1 hour from Boston is Worcester. So City D is Worcester. 
5.1.4 The fuel tank of NOAA's car has a capacity of 23 gallons. NOAA claims that in South Africa it will cost him less than 1,400 rand to fill up his tank to capacity. We are given a note that says 1 gallon equals 3,785 litres and fuel costs 15 rand 97 cents per litre. Verify with calculation whether his claim is valid. To solve this problem, we will first convert gallons to litres. So 23 gallons of fuel is 23 multiplied by 3,785 litres and this gives us a volume of 87,055 litres. Next, we will calculate the cost of 87,055 litres. The cost of filling up a tank with a capacity of 87,055 litres is 87,055 litres multiplied by 15 rand 95 cents per litre and this equals 1,390 rand and 27 cents. We can now compare the results to Noah's statement. The cost to fill up his car is less than 1,400 so his claim is valid. 5.1.5 Noah stays in Greenfield and travels to Pittsburgh and back from Monday to Friday. He fills his car with fuel on Monday morning. The fuel consumption of his car is 18 miles per gallon. He refuels his car to capacity as soon as he does not have enough fuel to complete a trip between the two cities. Determine the number of gallons of fuel left in his car's tank on arrival in Greenfield on Friday afternoon. From the map in Annex D, the distance between Greenfield and Pittsburgh is 49 miles. The number of trips Noah must make per week is 2 trips per day multiplied by 5 days a week. This equals 10 trips per week. The number of miles that he can drive before he has to fill up his car is 18 miles per gallon multiplied by 23 gallons and this equals 414 miles. The total number of trips he can complete before filling up is 414 miles divided by 49 miles and this equals 8,448 trips. So the total number of complete trips he can make before filling up is 8. After the 8 trips he still has to drive another 2 more trips to complete his 10 trips per week. The number of gallons of fuel he uses for the two trips is 49 miles per trip multiplied by two trips divided by 18 miles per gallon and this equals 5,44 gallons. Now the number of gallons left in his tank on Friday afternoon is 23 gallons minus 5,44 gallons and this equals 17,56 gallons. 5.2 a temperature reading of minus 7 degrees Celsius was displayed on the screen on the dashboard of Noah's car. Determine to the nearest 10 the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Use the following formula. Degrees Celsius equals 5 over 9 multiplied by degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. Substituting minus 7 degrees Celsius into the temperature formula given, we get the equation minus 7 equals 5 over 9 multiplied by open bracket degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 close bracket. Rearranging this equation so that degrees Fahrenheit is on the left hand side of the equation we get 5 over 9 multiplied by open brackets degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 close brackets equals minus 7. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 9 over 5, we get a simplified equation of degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 equals minus 12,6. Adding 32 to both sides of the equation, we get degrees Fahrenheit equals 19,4. Rounding this to the nearest 10, we get minus 7 degrees Celsius equals 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's going to be it for question 5. If you found this video helpful and you would like to learn more, you can check out this video next.